Okay, so uh, I'm quite excited to be here to talk about something that we've been working on quite some time. Um, I'm very happy to share where we're at uh, and also what, you know, what we're going to drive moving forward. So I'm Anfe Götte, I'm a digital domain manager in AKBP, and with me I have quite a team. I'm Jamie Cruz, the head of products for Subsurface Data Platform at SLB. Uh, Chandra Yileshwarapu, I'm the head of products at uh, Landmark and the person holding the clicker, so. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm not Kadri, I'm Svera Bransbergdahl from uh, Microsoft. Uh... Thank you. Okay, click. Okay, so this is uh, what we're going through. Uh, I'm talking a bit about the business and the challenges that we all share. Uh, also talking a bit about field development planning that we've been working on with Halliburton for more than a year. Uh, and also how data mesh and these type of principles can liberate uh, the platforms and moving forward. Uh, and then some Q&A. Okay, so I guess one thing that we all share is the volatility that we have in the market. Uh, and ACO BP firmly and fundamentally believes that digitalization is one of the main axes for us to transform uh, the industry. Uh, and we are determined to be one of the leaders to transform the EMP and industry. And now we're here on stage with the partners with Microsoft, Halliburton, and SLV. Uh, and I also think it's interesting to see some of the studies that's being done. So this is from an Accenture uh, t tech vision for 2023, where they're kind of stating that 90% of executives around the globe see that we need to have a change. Uh, in data management and also the architectural layers of IT. Uh, and what we see and what we found in this project is that through OSDU and data mesh, uh, we will be able to transform the way we build and manage the platforms. We'll have a distributed approach um, and Svara will take us through some of the principles that we're working on. So a bit on the problem statement. So if you think of just the underground domain in ACOBP, uh, what we have is probably around 150 applications. Some of them are part of our workflow, and some of them are just standalone, standalone monolithic applications. And these are the applications we use to drive decision making. And we're always trying to put them into one tenant and manage them there. It becomes very complicated. Updates are also uh, quite hard. Scalability is, for some of these, uh, platforms close to impossible. We've also seen a change lately in the industry that more and more software is provided as a service. That means that there is um, tenants being hosted externally where we're sharing data and getting the result back. So um, together with Halliburton for the last year we've been working on field development planning uh, and what that really is is to try and aggregate through lineage versioning and connecting to the data sets that we use when we make decisions. And that's for all business units, for all domains. So it's not one platform that has all the workflows, but it connects the platforms together. And what we realize, so in ACO BP, we're quite blue, uh, SLB in the underground domain or in the express domain, but in wild construction, we're quite red. And we need to find a way to connect these platforms together. And that's where Microsoft came in um, to, with a very good team to see how can we build and liberate these platforms very differently. So I think that's a good segue over to you, Svara, to explain a bit about the architectural principles. So thank you, Anfin. Um, we are in the interoperability session at the OSU forum, so that, that's why we're also here representing four different companies that have to work in an interoperable way. And I think for me, the, the exciting piece here is what OSDU has sort of started as a journey. I think Anfin jumped right into the data mesh principle and said, okay, this is what we, we're going to do. This is what we're really now aspiring to do, but I think we have just gotten sort of through the cusp on enabling OSDU, seeing what OSDU can do in terms of creating a self-serve data platform that liberates the data in the companies. Microsoft has, uh, has invested throughout the OSDU journey to, to make this sort of an enterprise-grade offering, and I think we're now seeing that by making this enterprise-grade offering 
available for SLB, RGBP, Halliburton, anyone who, who wants to play uh, on an OSDU platform, and then endeavor to connect these instances. We can help to address some of these issues that Arnfin talks about, because the workflows for the industry are very, very complicated, as we all know. I think this uh, FTP application that you're going to hear more about uh, you know, later today is a great example for how you, know, you solve one of these problems and we learn by doing. And I think what you're seeing here on the, on the screen are sort of the, the, yeah, the guiding principles that have got us on this journey in terms of saying, yes, it's OSDU. Each partner, partner here will have an OSDU instance and then we will design federated services that will connect these OSDUs and basically make a combined OSDU instance for the FTP application or any complex workflows that will allow the, sort of the complex stacks from SLB and Halliburton to operate, run, upgrade, and hopefully drive robustness and, as I said, connectivity between the platforms, liberate the platforms after we liberated the data with OSDU. I think with that, I'm going to you know, get into the next slide, which is really the, the exciting one, where both Jamie and, and Chandra is going to fight over the microphone a little bit, so we'll see how that goes for the interoperability thing. So. He's not fighting, he's just... <laughs> oh, that's collaboration there, right in action. Uh, so this is quite a big chart. I think we don't need to focus on all the details. I think myself and Chandra will talk through this and talk about some of the qualities that we're trying to communicate with this chart. I think if we simplify it a little bit and just look at the bottom and the middle, what we can see with all of our customers, the value comes from accelerating workflows. That's the bit above the data platform. To be able to create business value for customers, you have to find the pain points. I think as we heard this morning, the customer's pain points, measure what the current state is, improve, right, and, and then communicate that value back. And the key thing is this bottom layer underneath is there to facilitate and enable that and get rid of some of the friction points and some of the inhibitors that we've had historically in being able to have this seamless integrated <coughs> workflows. What's very exciting here on this chart, as Arnafin talked about, was a recognition that you're implementing that top tier using a combination of platforms and technologies from different providers and that taking advantage of the interoperability and the modular nature of the data model means that we can deploy modern patterns like data mesh. So along the bottom here you can see uh, the subsurface platform uh, being managed uh, and you know, run by uh, mostly blue with some of the SL tools and some of our data management tools, the FDP tool that you've heard about there with Halliburton, and also integrating other platforms, connecting platforms here from outside of that environment. So this idea that from an application or workflow perspective, we've got a unified platform, but with all of the decoupling and ability to innovate independently in the different domains. And with that, I'll pass across to Chandra to add some extra color. So are the remaining 18 minutes? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, uh, first and foremost, I think the, this particular pattern is probably the most relevant pattern for operators in the Norwegian continental shelf, hence for Aka BP. I just wanted to let everyone know that as of this Monday, Discos 2.0, which is a cloud-based seismic log wells and production data management solution on iNergy, went live for Norway. So the, the portion on the left, the Discos, which is really where most of the national data for all of seismic, pre, post stack, all the production data, all the wells, all of that is live and running through APIs. Most uh, operators in the continental shelf can actually access that data. So that's really one portion of what it is that we're talking about. Now, we believe in federated, virtualized, domain-specific data products and workflows. That is the reason why you see the four of us basically come here and speak about data mesh is a pattern, a deployment pattern that may be relevant to companies such as yourselves who have multi-region requirements, so that you will have multiple uh, OSDU implementations in each region. You have multi-instance you may have certain versions of OSDU in certain particular uh, versions getting upgraded at their own pace. OSDU provides partitions, so you can actually have partitions that can be used for joint ventures versus for corporate and things like that. 
So the idea of data mesh is not new. OSDU has some of these concepts of data segregation already built into it, and our requirements are such that we, in our companies, will actually have multiple OSDUs. As an example, at Halliburton, we have two versions of production OSDUs running. One basically used for all of our field operations, and the other that we use for more and more of the work that we are trying to do at this point in time. So there are already two implementations, but I would like to see them as if it's one single OSDU installation, implementation across the entire enterprise. You would want the same thing. And what you're seeing here is exactly that. There are multiple OSDU instances running. The data could be in different partitions or different instances. They could also be different versions of OSDU running. But what we are asking the cloud providers here, especially Microsoft and potentially others, to create a fabric by which when we interrogate the lineage, the APIs, we are interrogating it as if it's a single API and getting the answer back independent of whether the data was in a particular partition, particular instance, or in a particular region. What that allows us to do is to make sure that each of us who are coming from individual data products perspective, we can actually use different versions of the product to ensure we are ahead, we are able to implement our data products without depending on others. So the ability for individual domains, individual regions to actually accelerate the work that they want to do, the innovation that they want to bring remains in the system while from a corporate governance perspective, it is all OSDU. And that requires a lot of uh, work that Microsoft and cloud service providers have to do. But what we are announcing here is that some of the technologies that Halliburton has built and others have built around federation and virtualization, these are technologies and techniques we are going to be bringing in to make this deployment happen at AkaBP. So to summarize, if there is something uh, that interests you and piques you, please reach out to any, any of us but we look forward to using OSDU as the core to show this particular deployment pattern and, and continue to enhance the data mesh capability. Uh, this is basically what we're announcing at this point in time. Thanks. Just one thing. I think one of the, one of the things that we've been interested in, you've, you've used the phrase data as a product. I think that's an essential way of modularizing and considering that every domain doesn't need every element of the data model. So as well as looking at the system federated platform perspective, this also gives us an opportunity to consider those subsets of the model that are needed for individual workflows to accelerate processes, combine them together and implement them to support the particular domain. So it helps us break down the monolithic data model into data as a product. So that's just another concept I think we're going to hear more of as we go forward with OSDU. Instead of building a large monolithic uh, single data model, we'll be looking at in that modular data as a product way. In fact, actually, as you say that, it, it reminds me, every time I speak to our uh, uh, IT organization on the SAP upgrades and the capabilities that we want out of SAP, I take a step back and realize that most of us in, in, in our industry, we do massive SAP upgrades every five years or every 10 years. And the idea here is with data products and the ability to create a data mesh is that we are incrementally updating our data products on a every two week, every four week basis. So the innovation is much, much faster than dealing with a monolithic application that may constrain the massive upgrades uh, that it becomes. So one of the things that we don't want to do is, is to a place where OSDU becomes like SAP. These are massive uh, projects to upgrade. We have to manage these upgrades over years and years and things like that. And without having a capability such as this, it may be very, very difficult. Now, of course, this pattern may be relevant to only some of the larger companies with multi-instance, multi-domain kind of capabilities. Some of the smaller uh, operators may not have this issue. But I think the idea here is to make, not make OSDU the long tent in the pole when it comes to innovation. OK. So we shared a lot on the platform side. Um, and for AcroBP, we have a slogan where we're saying we're going to be the first truly data-driven oil and gas company in the world. So, so what does that really mean? Well, today, um, you know, I think we need to be honest that we're quite process-driven. It means we have a business management system that tells us quite in detail what we should do. What we want to achieve by building this is that 
the actual understanding of the data we have in front of us when we are making decision tells us where to focus. Where is the uncertainty? Where do we need to improve the data quality to make the decisions better? Um, so the, I think this is underbuilding that strategy. Uh, and through this, uh, this slogan will become a reality. Thank you.